Well, hello there, it's Ina here and welcome to my art room. So last week I showed you how I reused the background, which originally looked like this. I also took the gargoyle off and the box and today I will show you what I did with those items. First of all, the box. Now I did have to undo a couple of pieces in order for me to unscrew this from the original frame, uh, but these pieces I can put back. It might need a little paint to repair the damage, which is minor. Now I don't think this little box will stand on its own, so I found another new substrate. It's sturdy, it has a hanger, and it has a good size. I already marked the holes and I will screw it to this as well. Now, as I mentioned in my last video, where by the way, you will be able to find all the details of how I put the lizard together, it's never a bad idea to take apart a completed project if something about it bugs you and just doesn't seem quite right. Now, that's exactly what happened to the project I showed you in the photo earlier. I really liked all the components, but somehow they just didn't match together. I also didn't like the pale background. So anyway, back to my little box here. Because of its shape and size, I thought it had to have a reason to be somewhere and it should be functional. So I am turning this little contraption here into a key hanger and therefore I am adding three little hooks. And the wood is really hard and stubborn, but finally I got them in there. Now, whenever you work with something that has already been designed and painted and so on, you of course wanted to jive with the surrounding. So that's what I am going to work on. First, I add some fiber, same stuff I used on the box and so on. From here on, I think you can follow uh, my process very easily. So like always, I will put anything you need to know in the captions and I will talk to you in just a wee bit. Enjoy. So to do the little repairs and to integrate the background was easy, but now of course I need a focal point. So I pulled out some junk again. I have a half a plastic uh, pepper here, a couple little uh, square things, no idea where they came from. I have some broken jewelry, I have some beads, and I think I will try to create a beetle. Now, as you could see, I again used my wood burning tool to carve out some of the plastic just to give it a tighter fit. Then I will also use another kid's toy, this 
plastic tweezers. I cut them and then I heat them up a bit so I can bend them into the shape I need and I think they will make some great antlers for my stag beetle here. I will of course add lots of other little bits and bobs to complete the shape but first of all I wanted to make some legs and for that I used wire and beads and yes I was trying to show you uh, the process here on my video but the camera angle was just really poor so I skipped that part uh, but here are the completed legs I also cut out a cardboard shape that will go underneath the bug and the legs can be sandwiched between. So lots of E6000 to make them go in more or less the right position. Now because of the wire they're bendable so uh, I just need to get the middle section solid and the rest can be adjusted uh, later on. Actually just in case you're wondering I did make three sets of legs and one set of antennas because I know the stack beetle has six legs. So I think it's time to turn you back over to some more music. Now, like always with these type of assemblages, I will speed up the process quite a bit. Otherwise it will get way too long, but I believe that you will get a pretty good idea of how I will put this bug together. <laughs>
so I will show you what that looked like when it's all dry but now to my next project I had this old round wooden frame it's a little banged up uh, but because of its round shape I thought it was a perfect substrate for my little gargoyle and again I will decorate it a bit to make it fit better I give it some texture with some fiber I also add some chain and also a little bit of texture paste mixed with sand just to rough up this kind of slick uh, wooden frame. Now in decoupaging this very lightweight foam paper I was able to strengthen it and also to cover up the edges and I had planned to show you what I did after this but I guess I didn't turn on my camera. But the next few steps are really very simple. First of all I colored the paper and I used this antique wax and it gives it this old and worn look. Uh, then I glued and nailed it to the frame. Now it is bigger than the opening of the frame and I did that uh, purposely so that it gives me more room on the other side. Now the other side of the circle I covered in this very pretty handmade mulberry paper. I sealed it with Mod Podge and then all I had to do is add my little gargoyle and he fit perfectly. I made one very small alteration. I did add one piece right underneath his neck. So he has a little bit of shoulders now. It's just a piece of a toy. It has uh, some little metal dots, a tiny owl charm upside down, a couple of gears. But to me it looks more complete and a better cutoff point than what I had earlier. And then I added the little sign that says speak and I mounted it on another little bigger sign just to make it a little more prominent. Otherwise he is very much the same as he was before. I did add a little bit of teal waxes to his wings and his horns because it's also on the outer rim of the frame. I believe this little fellow looks way better right here on its own. So now back to the first project I worked on. Everything dried nice and solid and I hope you can see all those tiny gears I added to his belly and his head. Uh, they of course bring in a bit extra interest and I was able to pick up the gear idea over there on the left side just to kind of balance out the top and combine it well with the bottom box. The box is of course also very solid so it can support whatever may be hanging on those hooks. Now I did add a couple tiny gears inside of it and I also added two little dew drop jams just to give both pieces a few elements they have in common. The back is pretty clean although the sticker didn't come off completely so I may yet cover it sometime in the future. So here is the project I made with the box. And here of course you have the substrate that came from the original project. And then of course my gargoyle found a completely new home. And I'm quite fond of him in his new setting. So I really hope that today's video gave you some ideas of what you could do should you have art projects that need recycling and redoing. 
Now, if you like to see the details of how the little box came about, the lizard, the substrate, and of course also the gargoyle, you will find all those informations in some of my recent videos. All right, thank you so very much for visiting with me today. I'll be back soon, latest by next Friday. In the meantime, stay well and creative. Bye-bye for now. Thank you.